So I wanted to do something a little bit different in the EcoBoost Mustang because I had just done the Mustang GT a few weeks back and it's like Groundhog Day with cars, you know, shooting the same car week after week. It just feels a little funny. So I decided, hey, I'm going to ask you guys what you want to see. And uh, yeah, the MPG Omatic Fanatics came through with a whole bunch of questions. First question from SW, he asked about interior materials. What's the quality level like? And I gotta say, it's pretty good. I absolutely love this wheel. The seats in this car, the leather seats in this car, the optional seats, I like them way better than the Recaros, the optional Recaros in the GT. The GT seats, the Recaros were just, you know, a little bit too tight, too stiff, and there was no heat, there was no lumbar support, no adjustable lumbar, and this one, just blows it all out of the water because not only is it three level heat, but it's three level ventilation, which on a hot day like today is absolutely fabulous. Now here we are, we're driving the EcoBoost Mustang. And does it feel like a Mustang? Of course, man, it feels really good. Look at this road, it's twisty. One of my favorite roads. You stomp on it, it goes. It's an automatic. I'm not happy about driving an automatic rather than a manual, but as far as automatics go, this is pretty good, the shifts come fast. It's not dual clutch, right? It's not like uh, an Evo or something, but it doesn't have those issues either. So it's conventional automatic, but it's pretty speedy. There is a nice set of paddle shifters. They're plastic, but they do what they need to do, and you can be in drive and drop a gear if you need to. Tap, tap, you're back to where you need to be. Good stuff. Ford's done a nice job with that. Um, other interior materials, this dash, it looks like brush of metal, but of course, you know it really isn't. It's gotta be some sort of plastic, but it looks really good. So it always comes down to, why didn't you get the V8? If you don't get the V8 in a Mustang, right? The V6, that's a great engine. Solid engine, base motor, it is just fine. If you wanna go for something a little bit different, you go for this four-cylinder EcoBoost. Why would you want to go with the EcoBoost over the V6? Well, turbocharged engines tend to be highly tunable and very receptive to high-octane fuel. So if you're of the mind, you can crank it up. Just got to pay the guy at the speed shop to do it for you, right? You know, there's always an expense. You want to go fast, it's always going to cost you money. When it comes to handling, the four-cylinder Mustang might have a head up over the V8. It all depends on how you like to drive. With the V8, it's real easy to kind of get into trouble because it's so powerful, really easy to break the rear tires loose, and uh, that's what muscle cars are about. So when people talk about traditional muscle cars, they're not talking about four-cylinder turbos. They're talking about big old V8s. To the average person, they're gonna look at your four-cylinder EcoBoost Mustang and they won't know that it's not a V8 unless they realize that it's lacking the GT emblems. It's got dual exhaust, right? To an average person, they'll go, oh, a Mustang with dual exhaust, it must have a V8. They won't know. And Ford's done some work to the exhaust note and I don't know, they pulled some, some uh, tomfoolery. So it doesn't really sound as four-cylinder-ish as you'd think. It's not embarrassing. It's not wretched. It's not the five liter, but it's not totally horrible. Steven with him wants to see the max MPG that I can get out of the car. Well, you know, that's what I do. So we've got lots and lots and lots of laps. This first lap is gonna be cruise control on, and this is adaptive cruise control. We'll set it for 68 miles per hour, which is three miles over the Jersey State speed limit of 65. For all those people that think I drive like grandma and I'm like 10 miles below the limit. The limit here in this state is 65 and the cops can be tough. So I test at 68 when I do it in cruise. Let's hit the highway and see what we get in this first lap. That's 38 at the end of the ramp. ease it up the hill, aim to hit about 60 
miles per hour by that crest. Just a little over 10 miles in and we're looking pretty good. The goldish fish asks, can you please show us revs at 70 miles per hour? No problem, I've got a slew of rev shots at different speeds. Turning just under two grand at 68 miles per hour. Coming up on the corkscrew. And cruise control is off. And we are gonna coast down. In gear, always in gear. Right now we're at 60. Should get it down to about 50 by the time we're at the crest of this rise. And uh, I'll get back on it. Complicated merge here. And we want to get over. About 45 right now. 42. Light on the throttle. Let's see if we can keep it at 40 through here. Feels really good. Very tight. Roll on a little bit as we come out. Forty-five now. Fifty. Road is fifty-five up here. You gotta watch it because there are always cops. And we're at sixty, and I'm gonna stay there. The numbers look good. Had a bit of congestion there. Road's lightening up a little bit, but we are into some rain. Just a little bit of drizzle. Let's hope this clears out because rain affects fuel economy in a bad way. Coming up to the turnaround point. Cruise control off. And we might need to apply a little brakes here because we're going about 65. We'll brake right here. Road is a little damp. This is a halfway point and it's rare that I get a green light here. Usually we just sit and idle and burn up gas. Here's the halfway number. And now ahead back north. Well, we gotta go west first and then north. Hopefully we get an easy merge. You can eat up a whole lot of gas on those merges, especially when you're heading uphill. Looks like we're good. Put it back into cruise control. And we'll be getting off 195 west, getting on to 295 north in a moment. It's 55 through here, but again, see how people are flying through? I see plenty of tickets happen here. So I always take it easy. Right now I'm four over the limit. So that's pretty conservative. And I can probably take this with cruise through here at 59. Even though that ramp says 35, let's see how she does. Little bounce there, like a champ. You can hold your speed through these ramps. You save a lot on the way out because you don't have to regain that speed. So you wanna hold as much momentum as you can. And we're at 59 at the end of the ramp and right back on a 65 mile an hour road. Thirty-one miles into the loop, the numbers are pretty good, but we'll probably see them drop a bit as this last leg is an uphill run. It 
In addition to adaptive cruise control, this Mustang also has blind spot mirrors. And these are two technologies that I think are almost essential. If these technologies are offered in the next new car you're thinking about, you should definitely consider getting them because they take a lot of the stress out of highway driving and make things a whole lot safer. So I can see there's a pickup truck coming up behind me. He's now in my blind spot, but when I look over at the mirror, I see that little yellow dot, and I know he's coming up. I'm like, the hell, there he is. So I highly recommend both those technologies. If you haven't driven a car with either or both, you really need to. Now as this pickup truck gets in front of us, it slows down, it'll slow us down. And here's where we get off. We got caught in a bit of traffic there. And that looks like it did benefit. So the first one with cruise control on, windows up, and air conditioning off was 37.8 miles per gallon, according to the trip meter. Not too shabby, huh? This run is cruise control set to 68, windows up, AC on. It's pretty mild today. Right now it's about 64 degrees, but it's muggy. So I'm gonna turn the AC up. Let's see what that does to our fuel economy. Gotta crank it up too. 10.5 miles in and we're at 34.5. So a bit of a drop with AC on. I turned it off to shoot this so the body would be messed up. I'm gonna turn it back on. And we're coming up on the corkscrew again. It's a little loud because that AC is cranking. About 44 at the top of the corkscrew. Knees down to 40, 42. Light on the throttle. Now we always see a peak at the end of the course screw. Right now it reads 36.2 and I'm going to start my work and watch those numbers drop. And we're coming up on the halfway point. trucks in front of us at the light. 34.8 at the halfway point. No, 34.7. We can just sit here at the light and watch it drop. miles in. Oh boy, I could go for Primo Hoagies. Maybe even a Five Guys burger. But no, I gotta drive around in circles. Let's see what we got for MPGs. One more time. What do you say we do this one a little different? We've done two laps. The first one, AC off, windows up, cruise control on. The second one, AC on, windows up, cruise control on. And this third one, what do you say we do this one with the AC off and the windows down? People always want to know what the difference is. It's going to get real loud in here, guys. I might have to shout. Or maybe I'll just do this one like uh, pantomime or something. Third turn of the corkscrew and we are behind a Hyundai Tucson. So we'll see how slow normal people go through. The normal person breaks, 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 breaks down to about 35. 
and they don't take the inside line, they just go wide. Because it's a an SUV, you know. On the brakes. And again, three for three, hitting the red light. Interesting, eh? Oh look, it's Primo Hoagies taunting me again. I might have to stop. Air conditioning on, windows up versus windows down, air conditioning off. We have a winner today at 36.5 miles per gallon. It's windows down. So after three laps, I gave in to the temptation of Primo Hoagies. And I stopped and uh, got myself a nice sharp Italian and uh, an iced tea. I started feeling kind of blah, getting a headache. Yeah, maybe I'll just go home and take some aspirin, take a nap. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna give this one more roll. I'm gonna take her out on the highway. I'm gonna roll the windows up. I'm gonna leave the air conditioning off. I'm not gonna put it in cruise control. I'm just gonna drive it with a light foot with a target speed of about 60 miles an hour. And I am, oh, a little more than 10 miles into that right now. And the numbers are looking pretty fabulous. Coming up on the halfway point for the fourth and final time today. And this is definitely gonna be the biggest number so far. I took a sneak peek a while back. It looked pretty, pretty good. And we'll see what it comes up to when we get down to the light. And we got a red light, which is good. Don't mind that. All right, 20.7 miles, 43.3. So really, there's no trick to this. All you gotta do is keep a really light foot. Don't change lanes unless you really have to turn on the instant fuel economy display and use it. Pay attention to it. It lets you know when you can lighten up your foot when you need to. Right, we're going up a hill now. You're going to see it drop because you need to hold your speed going up a hill. But if you lay into it like this, you're going to use more fuel than you need to. So just let off. Go as light as you can. And I try to pick up speed on the downhills. Pick up a little speed on the downhills so that you have something to burn on the uphills. And it looks like at about 62 or so, we're turning around 1750 RPMs. So it does get real low there in the rev range. You know, not an idle, not as low as you think like a V8 would get. This is only a four, but it is remarkably efficient when driven with a light foot. Oh, and you're seeing that, you see that 29.7 or whatever it is? That is cumulative. That's not my average, that's cumulative since the last time that this screen was reset. So if we go to this screen here, trip two is my totals. Overall, trip one is just this loop. So right now it's 42.3 which is rocking. <laughs> it's really good. And there's this really cool display, right? the bar graph display that shows how you've done over the last 40 minutes or the last 30 minutes. And you can see there, I'm hitting that 40 mark because I'm just driving conscientiously with a target speed of about 60 cruise control off. And that's it. Last loop of the day, four loops. That's a lot. That's like Fruit Loops, that's insane. 
Rob Lock Jr. wants to see zero to 60 and quarter mile times. Zero to 60, I got gotcha. you. That was from a dead stop with no power brake. Kind of waited a little bit, didn't it? More power brake on the next one. Raging Bull 94 MTX wants to see the boost gauge moving back and forth or maxing out. Got it. Not bad. Catch at you would like to hear the exhaust note at idle and while revving. How about this? BMW Sport wants to see close-ups on the gas door lever placement and headlight controls. Well, I can take care of you on the headlight controls and that's what they look like. Gas door lever placement? Ah, this is an American car. We don't have gas door levers. What we do have is a really interesting secret behind the gas door, and that is no gas cap. All Fords seem to have no gas cap these days. They've just got a cover built into it. This car, you'll note, is built for E0 to E15. But the real secret is these things can go wild on high octane fuel. And that high octane is usually higher ethanol content, but it's not approved in the factory, so you gotta go to a tuner to make that happen. And look, there's another Mustang in front of us. That's very cool. No, it's not a Mustang. Oh, it's not a Mustang. That's an A5. And that's the competition right there. Would you rather have an A5 or a Mustang? Well, it kind of depends on your budget, doesn't it? And your taste, right? Your individual taste. But that A5 looks like it's target time for this EcoBoost Mustang. Just saying. To have the choice between the base V6, the EcoBoost 4, and the 5 liter V8 is proof that we've entered a golden age of muscle cars. The old has met the new. Traditionalists will want nothing but the V8, but techies will be drawn by the weight savings, efficiency, and potential in the EcoBoost 4. The right engine is the one that suits you best.